Now, ladies and gents, when I choose a tactic to try and do these kind of tactic talks for, I'm looking at names. I'm looking at Pochettino, Klopp. I'm looking at Ten Hag. I'm looking at these types of managers and the tactics informations that they create to see if they can work with other teams as well. Now, as I'm looking through the list of tactics to try and download and try out for this channel, I found one in particular that was a little odd. Let's take a look. Mr. Bean is not exactly the name you would associate with football most of the time. To be honest, I actually don't know much about him except for his shows. His, he's absolutely hysterical, and he's a big, big car guy. I have no idea how much he actually knows about football. But when I'm looking down the list of all these tactics, what to try out for this channel, Mr. Bean kind of caught my eye. So this is the Mr. Bean 433 Napoli Gegen Press tactic. Figured what the heck... Let's see what Mr. Bean has to do with football. The unfortunate part is when you go to this tactic on the Steam Workshop, there's nothing about Mr. Bean whatsoever. The creator says it's his most successful tactic ever. Uh, he's tested it both with Union Berlin and, as you can see, Napoli. I've seen some of the comments said, solid results overall, earning top three to five finishes with every club I've managed so far. Currently managing in Norway with the same tactic, and we are currently promotion candidates right now. So... I figured, why not try it out with the likes of Man City, Bournemouth, and Leeds? So we are getting into the Mr. Bean 433 Napoli Gegenpress tactic and see how it works. Now, before we go into the tactic itself, I did want to mention, uh, I don't know how many of these, I, I've set up a lot of these in advance because um, they take half an hour to an hour to run each. I set them all up in advance. I don't think there are any more Man City, Bournemouth, Leeds ones after this. I've switched to Italy. So we're going to try something different in there. And I actually might take this tactic and try it again in Italy just to see if it works differently for the likes of a Napoli or a Juve or, you know, Lecce or something like that. But for right now, we are sticking with the Man City, the Bournemouth and Leeds, and we'll see how this works. As you can see, in general, starting out with a sweeper keeper, moving to automatic fullbacks, then central defenders on defend, a deep line playmaker on support, an advanced playmaker on support, a box-to-box -box midfielder on support, and then two inverted wingers on attack, leading up to an advanced forward on attack. In possession, fairly narrow, pass into space, underlap left and right, fo focus down the left and right, and play out of defense, shorter passing directness, slightly higher tempo, work the ball in the box, mix crosses, and be more expressive. In transition, counter press, counter, slow pace down, uh, distribute to the fullbacks and the center backs and take short kicks. And out of possession, mid block line of engagement this time. Every time it's mostly been the high. Uh, this is the mid block line of engagement with a standard defensive line. So definitely different here. Prevent short goalkeeper dis distribution, trigger press more often, not much more often. Uh, trap press inside and stop the crosses for cross engagement. Now, someone had asked me opposition instructions. There's nothing. Nothing here that we need to worry about, so you're on your own for that piece. If we look at the league table, however, this did not really work for Leeds at all. Uh, Bournemouth, however, it did seem to work for moving up from 20th to 8th place. Man City winning the league again, however, 85 points is definitely not anywhere near what we've seen in other tactics. Uh, we've seen 89, we've seen, get off the screen, we've seen 94, we've seen 103. So overall... Man City has done fine. I mean, they're got an amazing squad anyway. I'm sure Holland is right up at the charts at the top goals and all that. Uh, Leeds, on the other hand, just plummeted straight down. So not a fan of this tactic for a Leeds United. But so as you can see, 26 wins, 7 draws, 5 losses, 85 points, finishing out the season very strong. Bournemouth, 17, 7, and 14 with 58 points. Well off the rele relegation zone, finishing out fairly well, but somewhat mid, you know, mid table or thereabouts. And then Leeds four, fifteen, and nineteen. And as you can see, one of the four is Bournemouth. We'll see that in a minute. Twenty-seven points, well into the relegation zone. They have not done well, finishing out with just a single win in the last five. Not the greatest. So let's get into the schedule with Leeds. As you can see, they went through a fantastic friendly season. I mean, teams not exactly the greatest. Ajax. There you go, 2-1 wins away from home. 
That was a fantastic result. Every other one, I don't know a single thing besides the lead second team. But starting out the season with a nil-nil draw against Southampton, well, okay, Bournemouth, there you go. There's your 4-1 win. And then just absolutely piss poor all the way down to a Leicester win. Uh, a friendly cup third place playoff against FC RJ. No idea. And continuing the run of bad form. 4-2 over Nottingham Forest at home. And then 4-0 against West Ham at home. And that is it. An absolutely horrendous run from them. Uh, as you can see, Bournemouth again, they won. Man City 3-4 loss at home. So not a bad result. I mean, they got three past Man City, which is very good. Man City drawing away from home to all. Bournemouth drawing one all, and then that is it. So actually not a bad run against the other two teams, but overall horrendous. Bournemouth schedule, we went through, we saw the Leeds 1-4 loss, a much larger sea of green, however. They did start out with a one-all draw at home against Manchester United. There's that Leeds 1-4 loss away from home, but then overall fantastic up until Brighton 1-3 loss. Uh, you've got Brentford, 1-2 loss. They're losing to some really low teams. Crystal Palace in the EFL Cup, 4th round, 1-0 loss. Arsenal, 1-0-3. Wolves in the FA Cup, 4th round, 1-2. Uh, there's that Leeds draw. Man City, 1-3, losing at home at the tail end of the season. And where do they also play Man City? 2-1 win over Man City, away from home. So a very good result there. Uh, Bournemouth, having done a fantastic job, I would say, for a Bournemouth team with, again... No transfers in, no transfers out. So overall, a fantastic job from them. And then, of course, you come to Man City. You see, starting at home, 3-0 win over Tottenham. 0-3 loss to Newcastle away from home. Bournemouth, 1-2 loss at home. That just, that one hurts. I mean, that's got to hurt. But then an absolute sea of no losses whatsoever until Barcelona. Simply a friendly, though. 0-3. Arsenal, back in the Premier League, 1-2 loss at home. A round of 16 loss to Barcelona, 1-2. to two. Wow, why did you play Barcelona as a friendly and then again here? Interesting. Uh, they did record a penalty win, though, 1-0 against the uh, Barcelona in the round of 16. Moving on to Liverpool, beating them 3-1, then losing at, away from home in the Premier League, 1-2 to two to Chelsea. Losing 3-4 to four in the Champions League quarterfinal. Wow, they, they went all the way, though. Man, Real Madrid, though, we've seen them. Beat Man City in the past in some of these tactics in the Champions League. And here we are again, losing also on penalties to Aston Villa. Two cup finals, absolutely just blown away. It's it, You beat Barcelona, you beat Liverpool, you beat Bayern. But wow, Aston Villa stumps you and then Real Madrid stumps you. That is crazy. But overall, we'll get to the competitions in a minute. But again, an absolute sea of green for the most part. Very well done by Man City, as you would expect. Uh, a couple of losses that they probably should not have had. And for an FM player who actually would manage this team and not sim throughout the entire season like I have, yeah, I'm sure you know this 1-2 to two loss at home is probably not going to happen. 1-2 to two against Arsenal could possibly not happen. Champions League, 1-2 to two away from home. You know, who knows? So you could probably do a lot better with this tactic than the sim has. Now, I am going to start from the bottom again with leads in the competitions. Premier League, again, they just got blown away. Relegated handily. Leads uh, one point. I didn't even realize one point off the bottom of the, the league. So not very good there. Winners in the third place playoff. So they have a third place trophy, I guess, to put in their cabinet. Knocked out in the third round by Aston Villa in the FA Cup. Knocked out in the second round by Newcastle United in the Carabao Cup. Leeds United did not do very well at all. And as you could see, just... From like week, what, three on, they were dreadful. If we move to Bournemouth, however, in the competitions, you can see eighth place, a fantastic result for them, having been scheduled by the media to finish dead last in the league. So very well done to them. Uh, FA Cup, knocked out in the fourth round by Wolves, knocked out in the fourth round by Crystal Palace in the Carabao Cup. Not great in the cup competitions. The league is what they wanted. The league is what they got. And now they're in eighth place. Man City, however, is the one that we always look forward to. Winning the league by a single point, but look at that. 85, 84, 83 to Liverpool and Man United. Arsenal at 74, so they handily beat them by 11 points, but still could have gotten better, I would assume. Champions League, runners-up to Real Madrid. FA Cup, runners-up to Aston Villa. They did win the Carabao Cup, however, and they did win the FA Community Shield. So three trophies in the bag. 
The two major ones just somehow elude them, though. And not by much. Well, Real Madrid kind of kicked the crap out of them. But three all on penalties to Aston Villa, that could have been easily avoided, I would imagine, if you're actually taking control on your own. And I guess with that, just let's just shift to the player stats themselves. 93 goals overall in all competitions for Erling Holland. I mean, why even bother at this point? That's two goals a game, thereabouts. It's insane. 8-2-4 average rating across all competitions. Grealish and Bernardo Silva both getting 17 assists apiece. Uh, most player of the match awards, 32 for Erling Holland, And that is insane. And if we go to Bournemouth, go to their top, uh, player stats. 33 goals for Solanke. 7-3-9 for Solanke, highest average rating. Most assists with 14 with Ryan Christie. Uh, 10 player in the match awards with Dominic Solanke. Not too bad overall, I have to say. 33 is probably the highest I've seen if I can remember. Again, I'm old, don't remember very well, but 33 is a great form, uh, especially when they've been knocked out of both the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup pretty early. So if we move to Leeds, Bamford with 14 goals, 703 Sinistera with the high, highest average rating, Jack Harrison with eight assists for most assists, and player of the match awards. Ilan Meslier, Meslier, I don't know, four, and that's it. Four match player of the match awards is a crazy number. However, they lost a ton. So I can only imagine that they're not going to get many. But those are the player stats for all teams. Let us take a look at the Premier League team overview stats. Most goals, Liverpool, 94 to Man City's 91. Bournemouth with 61 in sixth place. Fewer shots against Man City with 303. Nobody else. Most possession, Man City in third with 55. Fairly close. I mean, average, basically. Most dribbles made. Nobody. Fewest conceded. Man City with 37. Most shutouts. At, there you go. Fifth place, Man City with 15. Most tackles won. Leeds United with 800. Kind of surprised not to see Bournemouth in this list. Uh, they probably had to fight their way to eighth place, but... Leeds United with 800. Dang. Nobody with best pass completion. Man City and Bournemouth both in most shots for 658 to Bournemouth 502. And then most points per game, Man City 224. And Bournemouth in eighth with 153. So overall, I mean, for Erling Holland, this tactic did smashingly well. Uh, 90, what is it? 93 goals or thereabouts? 93 goals. And an 824 average rating across all competitions. Fantastic job. Bournemouth, another great job. This is a great tactic to try out with them. Uh, I don't know how many of these, you know, if you get to Bournemouth and you see the schedule and how many of these games, you know, one all draw, I don't know, one four loss. That one hurt. That one really hurt. Um, but some of these teams, Brentford and Brighton, hopefully you can do something against Tottenham. You can possibly do something against, at least get a draw out of that and get a point. Wolves. So some of these competitions, if you take them over yourself, you possibly have a better chance of raising up in the league. I mean, 58 to 64 is a big difference. Uh, but a couple of those games, if you turn them from losses into draws or wins, there you go. You might actually have something. Bring in some new players, get rid of some dead wood. Uh, yeah, you might have a chance of getting better than eighth. But leads. Leeds did not do well at all. So if you are Leeds and you want to be Leeds, uh, yeah, don't don't look at this tactic for them. It definitely is depending on the players you have uh, and the players you can bring in and get rid of, but Leeds, not so much. I'm so sorry. But anyway, that does it for me. Stephen FM and the Football Manager blog channel saying thank you so much for all these teams, especially Man City and Bournemouth, uh, saying thank you so much for watching. Take care and enjoy.